Today I'm going to talk to you about the conclusion paragraph. This one won't be as long uh, because there isn't as much to discuss like there was in the introduction paragraph. In the introduction paragraph, I had to talk to you about all the different techniques you could use for the hook. However, in the conclusion, there is no such thing. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The conclusion paragraph has three parts. Okay, it does have three parts, just like the introduction did. But the only difference is now, if you remember correctly, the introduction paragraph, the thesis statement went last. But then in the conclusion paragraph, it's flip-flopped. Now it's going to be first. So the sentence number one, um, as you can see over here, your first sentence, sentence number one in the conclusion paragraph, will definitely be to restate the thesis statement and when you restate something I think we all know by now that that means to use different words it can only it, just like you did your concluding sentence in your body paragraph it had to restate what the topic sentence said in a thesis paper your restated thesis statement says the same thing but you're going to restate it using different words okay so that's what we just kind of talked about right here it can only be one sentence, and lastly, you can use a thesaurus if you want to help you find different ways to say the words. Okay, so in a nutshell, basically the first sentence is a restated thesis statement. I think we get that. All right, let's go down and move on to what will be your second sentence. What comes next? The second to third sentences, in other words, that means you're probably going to have a couple sentences here. Sentences number two and probably three are going to hook you back to the bridge. This means, I'm going to draw them over here. So we have our introduction paragraph, body paragraph number one, body paragraph number two, body paragraph number three, and then you have the conclusion. So here is your five paragraph essay, okay? Now, if your bridge up here, just in your introduction, brought up some interesting points. Like for a lot of us, we talked about in your introduction paragraph yesterday, we wrote about how many of the characters' true colors were being displayed because they were placed in a challenging situation that caused panic. And when we as human beings are challenged like that, um, our true colors tend to show. Um, you know, if, if there's a fire, are you the person that's running out of the building or are you the person that runs in the building to save people? And when faced in a situation like that, a challenge or a scary situation that can cause panic, our true colors show. Those who choose to save their own lives will run out of the building. Those who are heroic and want to save people will run into the building building or burning building. So as you can see, in a challenging situation, when push comes to shove, our true colors usually appear. So a lot of us talked about that with our bridge in the introduction. So now you're going to have to make that connections. You have to take your readers back to the bridge. So you're going to talk about that again down here. You're going to bring that same point up again. So you have your thesis about your character, characters, sorry, your restated thesis about your characters first. And then, in the conclusion, you're going to bring up that point again. How, you know, Agatha Christie did an amazing job. Maybe compliment her. Agatha Christie did an amazing job by forcing her characters' personalities out of them when they were placed in such a horrible situation. So, again, you'd be connecting back to your bridge. And then the very last thing that you do is going to be called... The last impression. And this is the final part. And it too will be right here in your conclusion. You kind of have a couple things going on in your conclusion paragraph. Um, and the last impression really is a time for you to try and leave your reader disappointed that it's over. And you're going to want to leave them wondering about your topic. Um, maybe it's thought provoking and it it makes them think about it a little bit more, even though they're done reading the paper. Um, a couple of things. One, I think that the last impression 
is very, very difficult to write. I think the last impression, um, I think it's going to take a lot of time if you're going to write it and it's going to be effective. To me, the lasting impression is the most fun part to write, but I also think it is the most challenging part to write. Okay, other things to do in your conclusion. These are kind of things not to do, actually. Do not avoid introducing new topics. We don't want, if you talked about Emily Brent, Vera, and Wargrave, please do not bring up Lombard. Lombard is like not even relative. So we don't want to bring up any kind of new topic, as you can see here. Another thing you have to avoid is you cannot use first person. That means no I, no me, my, anything like that is forbidden. No. And then we want to avoid some typical endings. So let's talk about what a typical ending is. Okay, I've given you some examples of typical endings. You can see them right here. So we don't want to end our paper with, as you can see, this shows you. See that you right there? We want to avoid first person. And I think I probably should have put second person. Okay, so we don't want to use the word you. And we don't want to begin our concluding uh, or anything like this in our introduction, or sorry, conclusion with clearly this is why. In my paper, I've just talked to you about in conclusion, in closing, let me say, all of these are what we call can, uh, typical conclusions, and we do not want you using those, okay? Um, we need to break away from that because it sounds very typical, which is why I like calling them typical endings. It isn't that they're wrong, okay? You've been taught to, to do a conclusion like that for many, many years, and lucky me, I get to break the habit. It's not that it's wrong, but I'll tell you what it is. It's boring. There isn't any kind of last impression, which is your ultimate goal. No last impression will come from any of these. Never will I be shocked, awed, impressed, amazed, wowed, or even, you know, with leaving me wondering more about your paper when you're done reading it if you use any of these typical conclusions. Because my friends, they are so boring. So we don't want to use those. Instead, you have to think of a more interesting way, a more thought provoking way to leave me as your reader absolutely stunned with your writing. And as we all know, that is going to take some time. Okay, that isn't going to just come to you. That is going to probably take you a good, you know, if I had to write a lasting impression, I would probably work on it anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes, to be honest with you, even though it's only a couple sentences. Okay. Okay, so really quickly here in review, you have your conclusion paragraph, and in it, we have your very first sentence is going to restate your thesis, and then you're going to Go back into your introduction, look at the points you brought up in your bridge, and then you're going to bring them up again in your conclusion, okay? But again, you'll be using different words. And then, of course, we're going to have our last impression, okay? So in review, again, you restate, back to the bridge, last impression, okay? Those are the three parts. We are going to avoid... Um, we are going to avoid uh, first person, new topics, and typical endings, right? We aren't going to use any of these that we just discussed. Okay, so that is a very quick overview of the conclusion paragraph. Let's take a look at an example because I think that always helps. If I, let's read, in order to write the conclusion, in order for me to show you a conclusion, I think we need to look at the introduction first. So here we have an introduction paragraph. The first thing I should see is the hook. Is there such a thing as being too smart for your own good? Can too large of an ego ever pop and backfire? 
Can this human error lead to self-destruction? So this is the question hook, and this was actually on your notes for the introduction. So the next thing that I should see is the bridge. Judith Gorge believes it can because she demonstrates this annihilation through her fictional character, Melinda Alice. The next thing that I'm going to see will probably be the thesis statement. In her short story, Those Three Wishes, Gorge's character, Melinda, is cruel, point number one, greedy, point number two, egotistical, is point number three. These three points make up our thesis. So these are going to basically be our three body paragraphs. Okay, so that is our introduction. Now I'm gonna go and write a conclusion paragraph for that. So the first thing I have to do, according to my notes, is I am supposed to restate the thesis statement. So here's my thesis statement, my original one. Let's look at my restated one. Judith Gorge character Melinda Alice in Those Three Wishes is very mean, stingy, and self-centered. Okay, I definitely restated. Um, I have the author's name first, whereas here it's kind of in the middle. Okay, so I've reworded that. Um, instead of using the word cruel, I used mean. Instead of greedy, I used stingy. And instead of egotistical, I used self-centered. So I definitely used some new words and I changed the order around because my author is now first in my conclusion, uh, which it was not in my um, thesis in my introduction. So I've definitely restated it. Okay, now according to this, I'm supposed to bring up things that I brought up in my bridge. I brought up in my bridge, let's go review. My bridge, I brought up uh, that self-destruction can lead to the, to the annihilation. In other words, you can destroy yourself because of greed. So hopefully I brought that up again because that was my bridge. Her fictional character is similar to many real people in our world today. There are people who think so highly of themselves that they are blind to their self-centered actions. Despite other people's conceited actions, they are, they are, I'm sorry, I can't I underline that. Uh, despite other people's conceited actions that are done only to better themselves, others can learn from their mistakes. Okay, so now I'm going to have my last impression. Humans can actually better their own lives by being kind and gracious. Others will fall prey to their own greediness. Okay, wow. So as you can see, I did not say in my paper I've just wrote about, in conclusion, these characters are crazy. As you know, clearly the evidence shows one can see I'm not using any of those typical endings. Instead, I have a powerful sentence. That's a last impression. Humans can actually better their own lives by being kind and gracious. Others will fall prey to their own greediness. It's almost like there's a lesson. The last impression, if you can try, this might be really helpful now that I'm hearing myself say it. If you can teach a lesson in your last impression, then you're going to have a great ending. So how about we all try to do that today in your conclusion? Make your last impression, try to make it a lesson and I think you'll find success with your conclusion paragraph. Okay, since we are done with our conclusion notes, what I would like for you to do now is uh, either watch the video again if you feel like you're not ready to write your conclusion paragraph tomorrow, because remember, that's what you're going to do. You're going to come into class and you're going to write your conclusion paragraph. So if you, are, if you feel good about that and you feel like you can do it, then you can go ahead and start working on the literary term assignment. Remember, this is on the table in the back of the classroom. Some of you may already have this, so I need for you to keep working on it. Some of you don't have this, so you need to go on the back table and get it. Um, this will be uh, due 
on Friday. Okay, so make sure you, you might want to write that. If I were you up at the top of the paper right here, I would write due Friday. So you don't forget. Okay, so go ahead and start working on this if you feel like you understand the conclusion and you know how to write it for tomorrow.